guys this week I'm gonna show you a whole lot of different things to make really cool bracelets strandage bracelets using strandage bars kind of like the jewelry of the 50s and 60s you know the grandma beads jewelry where they had the bars in the back and there'd be like all kinds of strands hanging out which maybe sometime we'll do necklaces like that too we did do a kitchen sinker that kind of sort a little bit that way but this time we're doing bracelets and I've got several ways to approach it, different ways to use something as a bar or an actual bar and I'm also going to talk a little bit about taking those itty bitty little cups and putting the itty bitty little rhinestone cup chain in it and crimping it shut so that you could connect it into stuff. You can do a lot of cool stuff with that once you see how to do it. It's not hard. Many of you probably already know how. But, you know, maybe many of you don't. It wasn't that long ago that I kind of had the concept but really never did it. So I'm going to show you how I do it today and just a bunch of other things. So let's just have fun with it, right? So come on over here. I've got something in front of me that I'm going to share with you and get started. So for bracelet number one... I thought this might be a fun design. Hold it up. I have a rather large bracelet on, so I should take it off so that I could show you how this looks on. You can, with this piece, keep going out. All right, I would have trouble. Okay, there we go. You can keep going out, like make it five and make it go all the way around your wrist. You can see how that goes. A lot of people like to do that. I made bracelets like this for a long time, but I've been reminded of them recently by Allison Murray of Bordeaux and Pearl, who is a member of the Bisa Boutique's creative group, and she's been making a lot of bracelets using this piece now. So it reminded me of all the times I used to, but I thought I would do it this time, economizing a little bit on the filigree that I used by using only three, because it really only has to go across the front of the wrist. So that's what I did and this is what it looks like and I used a very 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 large 25 millimeter lobster claw clasp if you can see that to hook it on. Now when you do that you have to be careful it, it, they'll hook really easy but you have to be careful that the catch goes back when you wear them. But see how I just have it in the front there and then I've saved money by using the circlet on this side and just a bit of chain. Now this is the bead and link chain from bisuboutiques.com. In fact everything I'm using here is from bisuboutiques.com including the 25 millimeter lobster claw clasp. And the way I set this up there's two inches here and two inches here if you want to take notes on how to do it. There are three filigree. I have them right here so you can see them loose. And their number Brox B R O X O seven seven three eight. Sorry for those that don't want to hear the numbers, but I gotta tell you as we go along, it doesn't make sense otherwise. So it's Brox O seven seven three eight. If you want to use this part, you might have other things that you can use. Just, just be inspired by this and do your own thing. But anyway, that's the part I use. And to make it nice, I like to put a brass blank on the back. I have oval ones and I have these square ones. They're kind of neat. They're base, B-A-S-E-07734, if you like this one. We have other styles, too, that will fit this oval filigree. And what I do is I'm going to flip this over on the back and show you. Is I just bond them on with these 6,000 to the back. And it gives me a place, too, where I can sign it, which I haven't done that yet. Because I think I might do a few more things to this bracelet before it's all said and done. But to do this, to set these up, it's just so simple. I'm not going to be able to set this whole bracelet up because I have a lot of things I want to tell you, but just for basics. Turn the filigrees over and then you want to glue this on. You want to get it in the center. Now in this filigree you can see here there's kind of a, an oval pattern in the middle. 
A lot of filigree are like that. They have a pattern inside of a pattern that can serve sometimes for you as a guide when you're attaching things. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my little tube of E6000. I love working with these little tubes. It's not the most cost effective thing, but actually I think I waste less of it this way. Um, anyway, so then I'm going to I don't have as much smell of E6000 when I use these. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of the glue on the back there, and then I'm just going to place it in the middle, getting it right in the middle of that oval in the back. Okay. Now you ha you know if you've used E6000, you've got play time with it, so you know, I can go back and, and uh, adjust it a little bit. So I'm put a little bit more. I just kind of go ahead and put it on, making sure that it's going to go more toward the ends the outside, you know, perimeters. Okay, I got that on real quick, but it won't hurt anything. Move it back in place. Okay, that looks fairly straight. I'll straighten them up later. And then the last one. Just, you may have a better method. That's fine. I like putting it on the blank first rather than on the filigree. It's ma it's less messy for me that way. So that's why I do it that way. Okay, these are fairly well centered. I'm going to move them back toward me, folks, so I can see a little more. Doing this angle for your benefit, but it's a little bit harder for me to work and teach this way, so bear with me. Kind of like reading upside down. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to kind of just straighten them out and get them centered. Pretty good. Okay. So when this sets up and cures enough so that you can work with it, probably a few hours. You wouldn't wear it in a few hours, but in a few hours it'll be set up good enough that you can, you can work with it. Then I would proceed to connect the other things. I used, here to tell you, I used 8 millimeter jumps here, here, and in the middle. In fact, I triple jumped them for strength. And then on the ends, I used six millimeter jumps. Also here at the end for the lobster claw, I used the eights and I double jump ring them. A lot of times it's good to double jump ring unless that you have a way of uh, soldering them shut that, that looks good, um, then, then that's good too. But um, I prefer to do it this way. So to each his own, however. I use two jump rings here and I use two here. You have to have a little bit of play. Probably most of you know that when you're going to put a circlet end or a toggle or whatever, you have to have a little bit of play with the ends or else it's too tight and you can't get the thing attached around your wrist well enough. A little bit of play is good. So that's why I went out with the jump rings a little bit there. Okay, so I will hook these up later and I will do something with this set. I may do a little bit of um, assemblage on the top of this one, which is what I used to always do. But today, I just took some 25 by 18 lace edge bezels and I glued them to the top of the filigree and I set them with 25 by 18 um, cream color pearls. And what I might do yet, before it's all said and done, is I might take a little bit of this sparkling chain and go around, just for just a little bling, to kind of relieve it a little bit, see if you can see, get the sense of it. Is that showing up, Javi? Okay, good. And then, you know, that, that'll that make it, I don't know, a little bit prettier, I think, because um, I love the brass ox antique brass, but sometimes it, it can tend to be a little dull to my eyes, so you want to relieve it somehow with a, a little bit of bling, a little bit of color. You can apply color or add things to it, cameos, whatever flowers that have color, but um, I think it's more interesting that way, unless you mix the metals or whatever, but just to add a little something to it. But it's a really great base color. It's probably one of our best selling plating shades. Okay. So that's it for this one. I hope I gave you a few ideas. There are three of these, Broxo 7738, three of these, which is base 07737, the circlet. Oh, I didn't bring the number down. I just brought the circlet. Well, it's in our brass ox section. If you type the word circlet, C-I-R-C-L-E-T, 
into the search box at PC Boutiques. These, we have a lot of them in a lot of different colors. And they'll come right up. They're really good for a lot of things. Make great connectors, uh, earrings to dangle stuff out of. I mean, I wouldn't be without them. I use them all the time. Okay? Alright, so we did that one, and that was kind of cool. Now, since we have the cup chain out, I said to you, I was going to show you how that you can connect it to these little connector ends. It's not a big deal. I used to think, oh, you know, you had to solder to be able to make this work. Uh-uh, no, you don't. You see them? Hubby, is that showing up? Should I put the mat down, maybe? So they can see it a little bit better, put a light color behind it. Just getting on to doing it this way, guys. But you just see, these are just real narrow little things. And regrettably, at this time, at our website, I don't have a lot of these right now. Um, I will be getting some in, but they aren't hard to find. I'll just say that. So I'm going to cut a little piece of cup chain. So um, let's see, how far out do I want to go? Well, let's see, my wrist is medium large. Let's say I'm going to make myself a bracelet. So I might want to go to about measuring. Uh, maybe just like six and a quarter inches. Normally bracelet would be seven, but till I put these ends on and a couple of jumps. Here, let me show you. And a clasp, it's going to make it a little bit over seven. So, you know, you have to allow for that. Okay, so now here's the trick. Doing this on camera, upside down. What do you say? You think I can do it? Who says yes? Who says no? <laughs> I know I can do it. It's just, can I do it like this? Now, one thing you could do is you could put an itty-bitty little bit of E6000 with a good old toothpick inside there to make it hold. I My jury's out whether I want to do that right now. I might squish. I'm going to try doing it without it. But, you know, if you were going to get, like, a bunch of them set up to do and then put them aside for a little bit until it's time to crimp them shut. That would not be a bad idea, and if you're working production style, that might be, might make a lot of sense. But for today, what I'm going to do, it's just as easy as pie. I'm going to get my little end and hold it with my shaky hands. And now I want to lay the cup chain into it. Now I go two pieces of chain, two little rhinestones. Then I take my handy dandy wolf flat nose pliers. See them? I love these things. You know that. I mention it all the time. And then I have to be careful. I may have to just pull this back toward me, you guys, and show you at the end because I don't want to ruin it. Okay, so I get you got to be careful. You don't get it twisted in there because if you get it twisted, you're going to crimp it shut and it's going to be twisted and you'll have to cut it off and, and ditch your end and get another one. They're not expensive, but hey, you know, why ruin it? So I got it in there nice and straight. Finger out of the way. Come on, Brenda, can you do it? And I'm just crimping shut. Come up this way. Just crimping it close. Now you don't want to put too much pressure because you could crack the little glass stone. So you don't want to do that. Get it in there good. Just keep pressing gently. And pull. Okay, it's in. Yay me! Okay, so maybe now the better, the second one will go better. But like I say, can't hurt to put a dab of E6000 in there. It's not going to really make it any stronger. It's just going to make it easier for you to crimp, crimp on the shot because it'll stay in place. Okay, so now I've laid that in there. Can you see that, Javi? Okay, just two of them, two little stones from the cup chain. This is, by the way, this is two millimeter. Crystal AV cup chain from our website, which is one of my favorites. I don't carry a lot of cup chain. A lot of cup chain can get expensive, but this stuff is really reasonable. Super, re and it's so fluid, so I use it in my work a lot. So now, aha, see it moved. You don't want to move. Sometimes I just start, you know, with one end crimping slight, slowly because I don't want. And I don't want it to move. 
All right, I got it. I got it. Success. Sweet success. Now at the end, I'm just going to kind of push it close a little bit more so it's nice and secure. Okay, that's in there, guys. That's not going to come out. That's not going to pull free. It's, it's very secure. So now, if I wanted a little itty-bitty cute tennis bracelet, all I need to do, a couple jumps in the class, and I'm good to go. Or I can attach, attach it to bracelet bars. And that's what we're going to talk about next, is strandage or bracelet bars. Okay, what are they? They are ornamental in this case. Some can be very plain. I love ornamental ones. But these are made from tooling that comes from the 50s. So it's very, very much like what you'll see in vintage jewelry. And to make a strandage necklace, you would put them this way. And then you would do graduated lengths of chain or beads from them. Um, normally, back in the day, they did like 14 starting up here, which is like really super choky. Nowadays, we don't want that. So you probably want to go like 16, then 18, then 20, then 22, then 24. You know, just graduating like that. And of course, your beads would have to fit. You don't have a lot of room between your bars. Now, what some people will do is, whoops, lost my cool. I'm going to get rid of this. I don't need it now. Um, what some people will do is they'll skip a hole so they can accommodate bigger beads, or they'll put a skinny chain in between. And that's a cool design thing to do. Or I've seen some people just take a rhinestone flat back and put it over the holes that they didn't use. So it's up to you how you want to go. But we're not making a necklace. We are making a bracelet. So that means that all of our lengths of chain, cup chain, whatever we're going to use in here, beaded bits, they're going to all be the same length. Okay? Now, I made one already to show you how it goes. I used our bead and link chain, this stuff which is my favorite because it's so easy to count off and we carry it in practically every color and right now today which is July what how is it the 8th or 9th um, as of today we have a good bit but it tends to run out a lot we have it made for us this is my favorite chain anyway I have one two three four five six because there's six holes strands of about four and seven eighth inches measured off my ruler of this bead and link chain and if you want to see how this stuff is made um the reason i love it is because like i said it's easy to cut count off there's these little bead links in between this nice oval link and what I like to do to do these bracelets is I like to cut this little bit off and start with a big oval and end with a big oval. If you don't start and end with a big oval, it'll twist on you. It won't hang right. So you have to have similar and go in the same way. So be sure of that as you're working along that everything's going the same way or you just have a twisted mess. It's really not hard, especially if you use this kind of chain or a Rolo or something like that that is real super simple to count on. If you use like a twist chain, that kind of thing, you're just going to be banging your head. It's a beautiful type of chain for this kind of thing. It's just going to go all over the place. So stay with something that you can count off nice. So I just hooked them all up. I used four millimeter jumps. Then I put a little mini circlet on this end so that it would look nice. We have those two. We have some in bags of six. And they're nice heavy weight. And uh, then I used a little swivel lobster claw thin. I like the swivels because it's easy to put on and off. And it drapes beautifully. I'm going to show you how nicely that drapes. I'm not going to try to put it on that because I will fuss. But you can see how nice that drapes. Very nice. Okay, so now what would you do with it? You've got this made. Would you wear it just like this? Well, you could. Or you could vary the different types of chain you put in there. Or you could put some cup chain and there, if you want it. Or you could embellish it. 
pretending like every layer was its own separate charm bracelet. Now you would have to work that just like a beading pattern because you don't want stuff falling on top of each other. So to give you a case in point, I have this one made. Let me get this out of the way. And I just use a lot of the little charms that I put in the goodie bags and stuff. So I have to let it kind of fall out to see which way it goes because I've really got a lot of cha on here. It is loaded. This is like a kitchen sinker. I said we were going to do kitchen sinker. This is a kitchen sinker. Okay, so I let it fall. Now i got to see which way it's going. So they're a little bit fussy to wear, too, because you got to see which way they're going, but they're awful fun to make. Awful fun. <laughs> really great fun to make. Okay. Okay. So now I've got it all hanging, right? And you can see what I've done. Let me get out of this chair and move up so that you can see. Sometimes a chair really helps and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got pretty much all the little oval things. Kind of, I see one I missed there, but they're pretty much all full. So then the next layer that I would do, let's find it. Okay, oh, I did mix metals on this too, so. This one's got a gold chain. Look, there's nothing on the next one. Why is that? Because it gives me room to do the next chain and put stuff on it, and I have it all falling on top of each other. So, pulling that one out. You can see they're kind of staggered, and there are fewer on this, this one. So that they're staggered. Okay, now what happens? Okay, here's another one. It's just all it is is just little beads and pearls and stuff hanging. I think I mixed them up. Okay. Beads and pearls hanging. Oh, there's another one of those. Then, then there's another gold piece right here that comes in there, and that's just to fill the spot. You know, like I say, I don't like having an open hanging hole. And it adds a little bit of bling to it because it's got a little sparkle. And then the last row to hang over that. And I've got some little pearls and Swarovski crystal Chanel's and stuff like that going over top. So that when it's all said and done, it plays out pretty nicely. And even though it's a very, very busy piece, things are not falling over top of each other. And actually, it's pretty comfortable to wear just makes noise. <laughs> jingle, jingle, jingle. Okay, one last piece to show you. I hope you'll try that. It's really, it's, you know, to get this far with it, it's basically cutting all your pieces of chain, which I said again is four and seven eighths, but you know, you might want a little bigger, a little bit shorter, it's up to you. And then just hooking them up and you've got your basic grid. Go ahead and put your circlet on the end. Go ahead and put your swivel uh, lobster claw on the end. We do have swivels at the site, by the way. And get it all prepped and ready, just like it's a grid. And then work from it. See where you get. Work it out like a puzzle. That's kind of what I do. One last one I have to show you really briefly is one that I love. And this one is really sparkly. And it's all done in gold colors and crystals. And some vintage chain, too. Now, you can see I didn't use the stranded, standard strandage bar here. What I used was this piece in Russian gold plate. And I didn't get this idea by myself, although I have used findings this way before. I've used findings this way and other things that we've done together that were hooked together. But um, my friend Maki from Maki Design at Etsy showed us a couple of really beautiful bracelets that she made with hooking beads together using this very piece. What you have to do is when you get it all hooked up, you have to bend these ends because flat doesn't work with this. You've got to bend them. Just like I show you how to do, you know, other things that I bend it. I can't do it backwards, guys. I'm sorry. Point it toward me and then just bend it a little bit, about like that. You can adjust it. If you don't want to use it that way, it's easy to put it back. 
Okay, and then it's basically just playing with it till you get it all hooked up. Now this is a little bit different because you don't have standard hanging holes. You're going through filigree. So you might have to monkey with it a little bit. You're going to want to use a 6 or a 4 millimeter jump. And I have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 layers on there. Some of them I've kind of double hung and some that were fatter, bigger chain. I single hung off. I was to do this over. I wouldn't use this heavier Rolo in here. I just happened to love it so it was cut to the right size and I thought, oh, I'll go for it. But um, I don't think I, I would use that next time. Or maybe I'll even replace it. I want to tell you too how long these lengths are because I forgot to measure and tell you. Yeah, they're like three and three quarters. That's what you'll cut them to if you're using these bars because they're bigger. Okay, three and three quarter on that one. But I just want to show you how this drapes. And I put a toggle on it with lots of liberty on the end. But this this is just beautiful. And it's easy to get on because there's a lot of play. But because there's a lot of play, look what happens when I put it on. It kind of collapses on itself. Is that because these pieces are too long? Not really. Although you could make them shorter. You could go three and a half inches if you wanted. It is because I've got an awful lot of play on the back. So if I was to tighten this up, let me just pull up on the top. If I was to tighten this up, take a link out. You'd see how I wouldn't have that problem. I like a little play in my necklaces, but in my bracelets, but I'm not sure that I want this much play in it. It's okay, it's pretty, but it, I think it would look better, don't you? If I took and I pulled it up a little bit. So it's still comfortable, not pinching me, but just some more stationary. So that's what I think I'll do. So that's a little troubleshooting for you. You know, sometimes it's nice to do a video where you say, well, okay, I did it this way, but what if I did this? And is this a good design? And you need to be thinking about that when you make things. Is this a good design? It might be a clever idea, but is it a good design? Is it going to play out well? Is it going to be comfortable to wear? Is it going to be something that's going to jag somebody or pinch them or fall off easy? or just be difficult to wear, not feel good. So it's a good thing to think about when you're designing. So I'll take that off. One last little thing I want to show you today. I'm going to get back up in my chair so I can show you. It's not something that I made, but it is something I'm going to use. This pretty little package was sent to me by my dear friend Paula Gaskell who makes amazing little roses out of polymer clay. In fact, she sent some to us for the workshop in May so that we could wire them into our designs. And I'm going to take them out of the little bag. And you can see I've got such pretty things. These, got, these are made from canes because they have a little bit of veining in them. And here are some orangey salmon color ones. Here's a purple one, here's a red one, here are three white and three pink. She makes them all kinds of colors. And can you get a real good close-up of those? They are just awesome. And you know, Paula and I, when she started making her roses, you know, she felt a little bit unsure. One day she called me and we talked about it, and I said, you know, Paula, if you were to make those rose beds so that they had a hole going up and down, I bet you'd sell a lot of them because they'd be good for errands, right? So I'm going to show you what they look like. I'm going to put them on a head pin here and show you. I think I'm going to do these because I like this color for me to wear. So I've got a hole here. Put that up there. Oh, look at that. So I've got my little ball end head pin in that. Now all I got to do is maybe put a uh, little bead cap on that, or maybe a pretty crystal rondelle would be nice, and then a pearl, and then just loop it, and I'm going to have earrings. Sometimes when I'm going to do a lot of dangles, I'll go ahead and I'll just put my 
rhinestone head pins through and just have them ready. I got E6000 on me. I hate that. Okay. So aren't they lovely? Paula can't make enough of them. She's filling orders left and right. But you'll find her at lovelylaylabugs.com. Paula Gaskill, G-A-S-K-I-L, lovelylaylabugs.com. And they are just little amazing wonders. Even the little leaves on top of them are from canes. So um, check Paula out. And thank you, Paula, for your generosity. And it was really, really fun to brainstorm this excuse me, to brainstorm this with you, and uh, it's nice to see you having success with it. It really pleases me very much. So anyway, guys, that is it. I'm going to put these very carefully away. I don't want a thing to happen to them, because they were such a lovely gift, and they're so precious. I think I'll just put these in here like that, too, and save them. And next time we get together, I'll try to have something else clever to share with you. And you remember, the home of the good stuff is bsuboutiques.com. And that is the truth because I handpick everything that goes on that site. And if I wouldn't use it, I wouldn't sell it. So there. <laughs> I believe in quality. Sometimes quality costs a little bit more. But we always have discounts and perks and coupons and rewards and stuff going on. Free gifts. Hey. You're going to make out like a bandit. <laughs> so just come on over. Join us at the Bisu Boutiques Creative Group at Facebook so that you can share with us the things you've made and see what other people have made as well as talk about techniques. We also talk about the business of craft. We talk about Etsy stores. We talk about show displays, the shows we're doing, um, little bookkeeping things, just anything having to do with the business of making things and selling them for profit. And if you don't do that and you're a hobbyist, well, we just help you to learn to work more effectively. So, anyway, come join us there. Come see me at bsuboutiques.com, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.